Can one of the co-hosts find Trey and click him up? I can't do it. Oh, can you there he is. Me? You got me? Yeah, we got you now, bud. Okay. You're, you're spotlighted, though, not me. Okay. Okay. Um, let, let me show you something real quick because you were talking about it. Here's a piece that I did with the, uh, with the burning on it. And basically, I finished it and then burned it and then, uh, you know, cleaned it off a little bit, and that was it. So. Okay, Chuck, you see how that is? Trey, on your burned piece there, did what, what wood was that, and what fit, uh, and what solution did you use? I used boric acid. Okay, cool. And what was the wood? Um, and the reason why, is, or I used borax, I mean, not boric acid. I was using baking soda, and I was getting a lot of darkening of the wood, which I did not like. And it was really yucky getting that dark wood. So, um, so I, I used the, uh, I tried the uh, bor borax, and I think it worked better than boric acid because it didn't stain the wood as bad. And what was the wood originally? <sighs> I don't know. It was in my wood pile. Okay, found on ground. <laughs> Um, it's not, it's not, it's not something I'm used to having around here, so I really don't know. Okay, but, well, it's a beautiful piece. Thank you for sharing it. But uh, anyhow. Trey, before you crank up your demo, because uh, we're anxious to see this, I want to welcome all new turners that are, or new members that are joining us tonight. Uh, this is Worldwide Wood Turners. This is a free wood turning club that's worldwide. In fact, we have a couple of folks from Great Britain tonight, uh, Australia, Canada, um, and all these people are welcome to be part of our program. You are too. And we're going to try to do a demonstration every week. We do gallery every week, and we've got some challenges um, just to see how you make it out. So if you're joining us tonight and you want to say hello after Trey's demonstration, we'll go back and pop into that, okay? And uh, I guess we'll go back to Trey. Go, go back to Trey. Go back to Trey. That was here. Okay. Yep. There he is. Got me? Okay. Um, this, is, this is what I'm going to be doing this evening. Um, I'm going to do that little inlay on there. Um, I'll switch cameras. Um, so, I, so I'm gonna try to. What we're gonna do is we're gonna carve out a design, carve a design out, and then inlay it. Uh, I'm gonna use Florentine for my uh, uh, for stone to inlay this with. I start out with a globe. Just turned on a pin mandrel because they're, they're small. Then I'm gonna roughly draw out. I draw a pattern on a line, draw a line back over here, and then I'll come in and Holly, Holly is it? I'm, you know, whatever. So it fits real well with. Okay, and that gives me a pattern to work from. Now, now I personally use an NSK, but you can use any tool that you want to carve that out with. And let me see if I can zoom in a little bit closer on this. Okay. Can you I'm cutting more about the screen, Trey. A what? Can you go more toward those discs for center screen? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay. Now I'm cutting down about an eighth inch. Is that just a straight cutting bit you're using? Uh, yes, I'm using a uh, 699L is what I'm using. It's what I use for piercing. Okay. And I'm using that really to, to mark the, the boundaries, the ed edges of it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that gives me the edge that I just did there. Now I'm gonna go jump to a 
to a round burr. And basically just clean out the middle of it. It's going to come up. How deep are you going? Like a sixteenth or thirty seconds? About about an eighth inch total between a sixteenth and an eighth. For those that don't know, the NSK is an air powered uh, engraver or decoration tool. It's probably one of the finest in the world. Uh, it's not cheap, but you can do this with a Dremel. I was gonna say any rotary tool you want, a Dremel, flex shaft, or whatever will do it. Um, the design I have is pretty small, and since it's such a tiny design, this works real well with it, but... Uh, <coughs> Okay, I'm gonna move. That removes the bulk of it. Now I'm gonna stick, jump to a smaller burr to get the edges. That's an insertion tool. All it does is push on the side instead of the end of the bit. And I'm gonna undercut these edges just a little bit. And I'll clean that edge all the way to the edge there. The undercut, I feel more comfortable doing that because I, it, it'll always lock in there if it's undercut. Now the stone I'm going to use tonight is Florentine, and, and it's a soft stone. It's important to use take a soft, soft materials to do the inlay with. Okay, and I am through carving. Oh, by the way, Trey, if you didn't tell him, don't do this inside unless the boss is not home. <laughs> I have a very sympathetic boss. So, um, anyhow, that's I've carved that out. Now, the next thing I'm going to do to it, Florentine is sort of uh, it's it's very translucent. And I found you're better off putting a backing on these uh, that'll darken it up some. So I'm gonna paint it, the background. Um, a lot of other stones, black is a good background for a lot of stuff. Um, but for what I'm doing tonight, um, I want the, gr the green to pop out on it. After my brush up. And it's not, a, you can go over the edge because I'm going to wind up having to clean it up and re sand it. And I, did, I did not sa even sand these just because I'm going to have to sand them anyway. So I think I just put a negative rake scraper on it. For shape. Check. And I'm just going to run this down the middle, darken the middle up a little bit more. Great. Someone asked what kind of paint is that? Um, this was just artist paint that I'm painting. It doesn't make any difference what it is. It's just really any um it's an acrylic it's an acrylic paint but it really doesn't make any difference what it is it could be anything no no chemical crossover or or such no i'm not now i used to use super glue to to, to set the stones in but i've i've jumped to uh using a uh, uv resin cured polymer and then that's 
that's what I'm going to start with. That's the next step on doing that. So, so we're sticking the oven. That's dry. And we'll jump, jump to another one. That Same thing, but the, I've already, uh, it's dry. Now, I used the Florentine I used, and what I did is I simply took the stone and crushed it up. And then I ran it through some sieves. And the sieves I ran it through were basically, I just got some uh, uh, household sieves and ran them through different sizes. You know, they come in different. I, I didn't buy any commercial sieves. I just bought, looked at it and said, okay, this is a little bigger than this one. This is a little bigger than this one or smaller. And just got some various uh, size grips on it. So I'm going to use three sizes tonight. Uh, just because of the size I'm dealing with. Now in the past I was super I was using super glue um, and super glue works and when you use super glue you basically put the put it in there and put a little super glue on it uh, set it and then go back you start with the bigger size and then work to the smaller sizes. But with this resin I'm just going to fill it up, fill the bottom up with, with a coat of resin. It doesn't cure until I put a UV light on it. And one thing I like about I liked about this better than the super glue is super glue. If you start when you sand the super glue afterwards, it has a tendency. Which picture am I? Yep. Yeah, okay. You sand the super glue afterwards, it has a tendency of being. Um, that's the best way to say it, a gummy on your on your tool stuff and it's you know sort of moves around like it resets. That one's very well that one. Good old fingers, they work good. Yeah, they do. Go get the cheaper uh, tweezers. Um you're making contact with that is he oh, about the Epoxy. I, I put it underneath the bottom already, and I'm putting it on top of it. I'm putting this on top of it. There's, there's a layer of the resin uh, underneath it already. I think I wanted to say, if you get it on your fingers. It, it comes off easy. It's not a problem. OK. It's not like Gorilla Glue with brown skin, right? No, it's not. <laughs> so Trey, is that a thick resin or a thin resin? It's a, it's a thick resin. Okay. It's the uh, it's resin I got from Easy uh, Inlay, and um, I tried it, and I, I I like it better than I did the super glue, and I like the way the resin works because right now, you see, I'm still working it. And I'm going to put another coat of resin on top of that. Ray, did you say that it was a UV resin, like what you would um, put on ladies' nails? Yes, it is. It's a UV resin. So it well, stays it's, soft. It's the same resin I use for fly tying. Right. Probably very similar to it. This is uh, Hard Flex Dura Finish Doming Resin. Mm -hmm. Solar Solar yep. Using. A little while ago, you could see the box that came in on a counter. When he changes lights or cameras, you probably see it. Well, actually, it was a flashlight that came in this box. Oh. This is the box the flashlight came in. Is that the UV flashlight? flashlight? Uh, yes. And it, one important thing on, on UV resins, they have a particular wavelength they set at. And they do not all set at the same wavelength. And uh, when I started looking online at different light, lights and stuff like that, and I found a lot of these resins that are advertised that you go buy resin, they don't even tell you the wavelength that it uses. They just say you put it out in, in the sun. Well, 
Uh, it's dark outside. Well, and you're putting wood in the sun. Sometimes it, that's not a good thing. Yeah. Well, it doesn't have to be out there too long, but it's still, you know, put it in the sun to start working it. And I sort of wiggle it around to try to get everything covered. I'm going to come back with the thinner stuff. Now, the nice other nice thing about the resin is I, I, I'm not locked in on anything yet. It's just sitting there. It's not, it's still soft, totally, still liquid. So if you had to change your heart for color or accents or whatever, you could do it now? Yeah, I can take it all out and do it now. It's, I'm not locked in on anything. And a working time? Working time is indefinite until I took the light on it. Um, I wouldn't do it. You can't do it in the sun, but, you know. <laughs> a little bit more resin on top of that so I can work it in good. I found just taking the tool, I'm just trying to make sure re the resin covers everything. It does it. The resins covered that area pretty good, but I got some over here that I got some stuff that's not covered, coated. So. I can also easily go back afterwards and uh, and fill any holes or gaps with it. So, okay. I've got that in place. Now, this light takes it's, you hit it for about a second, wait a couple sec wait, you know, about 10 seconds or so. Okay, when, you wrap, when you wrap up and you got a moment, we're getting questions about what is a brand of that resin. Can you put that in our chat, please? Well, um, yeah, I bought the resin and the light from um, Easy Inlay. The resin is, this particular resin is Duro Finish Solar, Solar Ease Doming Resin. It's a particular resin. And it, you know, unless you hit it with the light, it, nothing happens to it. Now you say you hit it for a second or two and you let it rest. That's so you don't overheat it and let it cook too fast. <clears throat> but it's it's already set. That that is set. That's set. Yeah, it's totally set. Twenty two. I'm sleeping. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna sand it. Using like an 80 grit or 100 grit or what? Uh, that's a 150. Okay. And I'll just sand this one leaf. That this bit. Can that go back on your mandrel to be power sanded? Yes, it can. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay and I've got one spot over here. I, I'm going to go back and just have a little gap in there. Make sure it's rubbed in good. Set that. 
Okay. I've just put okay. the solar, solar ease into the um, chat there, Eddie, um, where it comes from. It looks like there's a lot of fun to be had with that resins because they do it in UV and they do it in um, glow in the dark and you can get various colors. Huh. That's nice. What's the source of that, Martin? I've popped it in the chat there just so that oh. the, the, the link's in there. Yeah, there it is. Solarese.com slash. Yeah. That's no, what I've heard, that's about, folks. I, I went to Easy Inlay and bought it from them. I compared the pricing, and their price is just as good as anybody else. So, um, And here's one I've uh, actually gone all the way around on. Yeah. I'll just put a Put a little water on it just so you can see see what it brings it up on it. Um, I'm not going to do it tonight, but the, these here are nothing more than a couple beads. They're uh, some uh, red coral beads. And next week I will show you the finished product on, on doing it. Um, you can in, inlay just about anything you want. Here's some other options on inlay stuff. Um, I can't do it from this computer because I'm, I'm I'm hosting, but if somebody could pop up that uh, place that Trez was just mentioning and put it in the chat, that'd be very handy. Um, this is an orange calcite. Calcite's a really good uh, material for it because it's uh, it's soft. So I can see it. Yeah. And that's the larger size, and then I crush it on down. Um, the calcite cups, that's some more calcite, except for it's gray. Um, the Florentine comes in, but here's, that's the same, same thing I was just inlaying with, green Florentine. It also has a purple uh, available into, in it. Uh, calcite also comes green, and that's a green calcite, but it also comes uh, white or clear, and it, it dyes very easily. So you can dye it and get any color you want under the, uh, the rainbow. Um, the importance on stones is that you pick a soft stone. Um, some other inlay things, and here, yeah, I'll back this off. I keep breath going backwards. Um, yeah, I once tried to inlay quartz. That's a huge mistake. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't clean it up or sand it. Um, nope, metal powders, metal powders, um, the brass powder, I tried it. I did not like it. It's just sort of brownish junk, luck, yucky looking color. But um, the nickel silver should probably do good. Um, I have done copper before, copper before, and it looks good. And I haven't tried this, but the aluminum is another good option. Uh, that's probably better than silver than silver itself. I've had um, a, a different product. I've had a, I don't I bought it off of Amazon somewhere. The name escapes me at the moment, but I have had success with the brass powder, and it looks like gold. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm second the motion on aluminum. It looks like silver. It's good stuff. Yeah, the brass, this brass powder, I put it on one piece and it just sort of, I lost it. It didn't do anything. Well, I was inlaying with super glue, so I don't know if that makes a difference. Real. I did it with super, uh, well, I did it with epoxy, I think. Okay, yeah, I was using, um, um, I used uh, really thin uh, super glue, so it wicked in. Um, now, I know uh, this came from Craft Supply on some uh, turquoise, powdered turquoise. Um, I am not sure whether it's real turquoise or not. Um, this is some other turquoise that's powdered turquoise. Um, and maybe get your friends in, in uh, Tucson to get some. I think this was $30 a pound or something. Yeah, and it sounds right. Yeah, it, and it, yeah, from the gem show. And it comes in, you know, that was the thin. This is, I mean, it's powder. This is the next one. Um, when you say you're crushing the uh, material, are you using like a coffee grinder or are you just uh, smashing it with a hammer to crush it? I, uh, I put it down inside of a, uh, I put it down inside of a uh, stainless container 
I think it may have been a, an old uh, uh, shake, uh, drink mixer, shaker. Okay. Put a glass on one side or the other. I put it inside in that container and put a piece of heavy steel bar and just beat it down on the bottom of that so that controlled it. Okay. And I just, I just beat it up and crushed it up and then, uh, then ran it through the sieves and, and, you know, to get the finer stuff and the different size grit, the different sizes. Yeah. But, Thank uh, you. But basically, the, the tourmaline and, and calcite are really good inland materials because they're soft, and you can manage it. Uh, all the hard stuff is it, it's really hard to do much with. Turquoise can get hard on you too, though, so you got to be careful with turquoise. Some turquoise is hard. Um, one of the disadvantages on the harder materials when you're sanding, your wood goes away before you your what you're sand your the surface mm -hmm. that you want to get rid of. So. What about soapstone? Not very pretty. I mean, if you're laying around something else. Um, so you're taking, taking I've had, I've had some on a maple and... maple bowl. You inlay some walnut limbs and put soapstone in around them to enhance the color. I've used black and green soapstone, and no, I've been yeah. very happy with that. So there's options. Yeah. Okay. So. Stoner is equal either. Yeah, um, right, I'm Dane. Dane, we missed your comment. Oh, uh, so I was saying not all soapstone is equal. So there's some soapstone that's just as hard as concrete. <laughs> I know my neighbor, my neighbor thought he would be slick and buy me a brick of a uh, soapstone. 10 years ago because he wanted wanted me to make a couple of shot glasses for the both of us and it was, it was like granite but oh it's authentic soapstone from Vermont I'm not sure he got real soapstone because I've done I've done quite a fair amount of soapstone carving and it's soft yeah it's super soft it's like talc yeah that's right. it, it, it it is talc yeah that's the problem I had with it some guy your yeah, fingernail, your fingernail will cut it. I turned a couple of pipes out of soapstone, uh, black soapstone. I got it from a place here in Michigan called uh, Sculptor Supply or something like that in Adrian. Okay. So and they had black and green and and some other colors. And a buddy of mine nearby uh, turned some stuff out of a pale blue soapstone that was really pretty cool. So you got to pick and choose though. I got concrete that's softer. Well, I don't think you got real soapstone. I think you got something else. Well, I didn't buy that. That's what I'm saying. You know, somebody else got it for me, but they bought it from soapstone place in Vermont. Authentic. It even came with a C of A. I'm from the area where that uh, Vermont, New Hampshire soapstone comes from, and I can confirm it is soft enough. You can cut it with your fingernail. It's very soft. It feels It feels like soap, which is probably why the the name comes from but uh, yeah it's very soft so if you have something like concrete um, somebody got taken or sent you the wrong thing well no they got they got taken that's what happened that's what I'm trying to say is yeah, yeah they did it's not all equal but you're the one who suffered from it yeah yeah I took it. that was it I'm like yeah I can't turn that <laughs> <laughs> okay Trey we got anything else sir uh, not for tonight. That was the, uh, I was basically just showing the, doing now this inlay, you can do this inlay on anything. It doesn't just have to be on, on a little ornament. It can be, uh, put it on a bowl, put it in, in, inside of a platter, put a picture in there, you know, whatever you want into it. Uh, you can turn a groove into it to recess, um, or, you know, or sit there and carve, carve a picture. Um, it doesn't have to be one color. You do one color at a time. Carve it, put the color into it, carve another section, put the color in, and, and work your way through it. And uh, you can get some beautiful pictures and everything else doing, uh, doing this inlay. Great. Great. Now, guys or gals, get out there and turn something and decorate it. So Trey, your Trey, where do you get your bits? Where did I get the bits? Yep. I bought them from a dental supply company. Okay. Um, 
That's I, where I get mine. Um, I, you know, I'm sure there's some people that sell them out there. Um, Profitable Hobbies, I think, sells bits. Um, and I'm not sure whether there are any wood turning groups, uh, wood turning things sell the bits or not. Um, but the two bits I use for piercing is going to be a uh, 699 and a 169 L, L, 169L and a 699L for long. Your dentist doesn't use that bit very often, though, so it's an unusual bit for him. Yeah, and I'm not sure whether there are any wood turning groups, wood turning things sell the bits or not. But the two bits I use for piercing is going to be a 699 and a 169L, and a 669L for long. Your dentist doesn't use that bit very often, though, so it's an unusual bit for him. But that's if you know anybody who's going to dental school, ask them. I went to my dentist and asked my oh. dentist, and they gave me five uh, different bits that they had sterilized that they were getting rid of. Well, I I got a bunch of bits from my dentist too, and I and I use some of them. But uh, this bit, uh, let me get so you can see a pick. See if I can get it so you can even see it. As bad as they are, let's see. Let me switch to maybe better on the camcorder. Let's see it. Um, there you go. Oh, well, there it went. There it went. <laughs> well, I'll there if I can find it. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll grab another one and find it in a minute. But it's, it's nothing more than it's, it's a straight bit, a slight, slight taper bit. Um, on it, so, and your dentist doesn't use this, this you know, he's going to use a ball burr, a ball, and that kind of stuff more than anything else. My word of caution is, be careful buying them on eBay or one of those other discount centers because they will not hold up. Yeah. They look like a great price. They, you'll be changing bits all day long. I have bought I have bought some of them on eBay, and uh, it was a great price. And they they didn't even run true. They vibrated on me badly. Yeah, they were not even running true. They were not even running true to form. So um, some of them are okay. A, you know, there's a lot of them work. out there. Dent Supply, Patterson, all them people sell those burrs. Thank you. Can those numbers be repeated? Uh, 169L and one and 699L. Somebody put that in chat, please. Thank you. And the difference is, is I believe, if I get it right, the 169L is the one you'd use on harder woods. Are extremely hard woods. The other one you'd use on woods that are a little softer, like the maples and stuff like that. Great. All right. Well, Trey, I I'm use those birds thank about every day. Pardon us. I said I use those birds about every day. I'm a dental lab technician. Oh, you, all right. you, okay. Those are standard birds that you use. Yeah, that and and bigger ones and smaller ones. Okay. I have a regular handpiece though that that I use them through. Um, and plus you, the table lathe. You can use a handpiece. You could use a handpiece for for this too. Yeah. Uh, it's just an angle handpiece. This this what I'm using is a uh, it's a Wrong NSK camera. press NSK Presto, and it's basically a, a tool for dental labs. Yes, it is. it is. It's a dental lab tool, is what it is. Uh huh. It's air so I'm, I'm on the wrong picture. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a dental lab tool is what it is. Uh huh. It's air driven. Air driven. It turns the three hundred and fifty thousand RPM. I run it about uh, thirty eight uh, psi yep. on it. The beauty is even with a little bit of pony compressor, you can keep up with that machine. Absolutely. You ever try using some acrylics? Uh, for in for uh, talking about the inlay with uh, yes, like the clear acrylic that you can stain in any color or or the standard denture acrylics. No, I have not. And there's a a, a cure, light curing system that you can use that cures by the light system, like you're just using. But you, there's it comes in different colors too that you can just press it in there and color it, and it's sand, you can sand it off. 
It's like okay. a putty. Yep. Okay. Now I do know that the um, I, the the resins that are used in the dental industry have a different wavelength than the, what this one is. I think this one is 385, and your dental ones are what around 425, 430, or something. Yeah, something like that. But you have a triad machine; it it automatically kicks it on when you turn the switch on. It has different time time levers, it's like two minutes, four minutes, eight minutes, and it has each time has a different the length of curing. But it but it's a different wavelength, and yes. this this resin will not cure with your dental lights. No, but I was talking about the, the triad material will do that. It's just the like triad. a putty. Okay. Yeah, you put it in there and mash it in, and the light will cure it. That if you had the triad machine, just like you're using, it would work yep. just perfect in a triad machine. Okay. I'll get back out of out of the way now. No, yeah. that's uh, uh, bringing a lot of uh, new stuff to the table. Yeah, and remember, folks, if you've got something like that and you want to show us, how to get there? I mean, I'm looking at the chat right now, and we have the link to the uh, the Inlay, we have the link to the NSK, uh, and many other things in the Deal Works. Save the chat before you leave today. Trey, I want to thank you so much, sir, for your You're welcome. Night. You're welcome. And we will see you uh, next week. Okay. For a, and uh, what are we doing next week? I think I'm gonna try to do the inside out. All right. I didn't want to hook on in in case you wasn't ready. <laughs> um, I think I'll try that. I'll see if I can get ready for it. Uh, there's some prep on it, but I'll be over with my, my festival will be over this weekend, and then I'll, I can probably dedicate a little time to it. All right, sir. Thank you, Trey. Appreciate the, the, the information. More um, than welcome. All right.